Hello there, Pisces. Welcome to your reading. So um, I've got a really complex image that I saw uh, when I was uh, meditating on this month's reading for you. So it's almost like a Homer's Odyssey, okay? It's just this man. Um, he's by himself, though. He doesn't have any other people with him or his soldiers with him. Um, he's definitely wearing some type of a Roman outfit from what it looks like to me. He lives on the other side of the water, okay? So he has to like, um, he has a long ways to traverse over water, over the, the ocean in order to get home. He chartered a boat and he's still wearing his armor and his, uh, his war gear. And he's just like, okay, the battle's already done. I'm, I'm a winner. I, I'm just trying to get home right now. And he's still fairly young, I would say, you know, under the age of 30. And he's just trying to get home. He chartered a boat. He rented out this boat or bought the boat or whatever. And he's by himself on this voyage. So he's just trying to get home. Along the way, he's like steering his boat. He, he hits like a swarm of mermaids, okay? And they're tossing their seashells onto his boat as a gift, as like a parting gift. He waves goodbye to them and he's like, oh, if I were to tell the people back home that I saw a flock of mermaids, they're not going to believe me. And then the next day he continues on his journey and he sees the sunrise and it's like this giant, so he must be close to the equator. It's like this giant ball of fire in the sky. And he's all like, oh, if I tell the people back home that I saw this giant ball of fire uh, coming through the horizon, you know, they're not gonna believe me. And then um, the next day he made, you know, a little bit more progress along the way. And then he sees like a two-headed bird flying above him. It looks almost like um, a pterodactyl. That's what it looks like, but it has two heads. And it's like spitting out fire. And he's like, well, if I tell the people back home, they're not going to believe me. And so he sees all of these amazing things on his voyage. And he's just like, I wish they could see it because if they see it, they would believe me. So if I were to tell my story, when I get home, no one's gonna believe me. He finally makes it home and he gets like a really warm warrior's welcome. And um, he sits down at the dinner table and they're like, tell us, what did you see? What did you see? And so, you know, the people that are sitting around him, he, it's like a, 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 a lot of different types of people. Some of them work for him. Some of them are his family members. So I see like an older pudgy lady. Uh, an older skinny man so I feel like they're a couple possibly his parents and I see a bunch of little kids sitting on the far end of the table and then his siblings you know around his age they're like tell us what you saw tell us what you saw so he proceeds to tell them everything that he saw the mermaid the two-headed uh, bird the uh, sun in the sky as well as other things and like the adults were just like, okay, it's time for bed. Like they're not very impressed by the stories that he's telling them, but the children on the far end of the table are just like, tell us more, tell us more. Okay, so that's where the, the scene kind of cuts out. And so um, when I saw this, I was just um, thinking about how a lot of you Pisces, you've been through a lot in your life, okay? You've experienced almost like 10 lifetimes, okay? 10 lifetimes. You've experienced what is equivalent to what somebody would have experienced in 10 lifetimes. And I feel like it really aged you, it really matured you, it made you uh, a really strong person. And I feel like in a way, some of you are looking back on your past experiences and you're just like, I've seen a lot of things in my lifetime. I've put up with a lot of things and I never, um, I wanna say like, it, it, whatever like didn't break me made me stronger. It made me, you know, a lot more resilient. It made me a lot more sure. It, it, um, it, it almost like, solidify your resolve your will to live your will to you know live another day see another day and there's at the same time this sense of homecoming this sense of like how the, the realization of how important family is to you and even if your family are not impressed by the choices that you've made or by the the journey that you chose to take as an individual at the end of the day your family members are always you know um, 
there at the end of your voyage okay so family i feel means a lot to you even if you don't agree with each other even if they don't agree with the choices that you make there's always this sense of like they're they're always open armed when they see you they always bring you into the fold they always make sure that you're all right okay so i feel like there's a lot that you might have it, i'm almost seeing like um a situation where you want to explain to them you want to tell them this is why i did what i did okay um but i feel like you know they're they might be a lot more pragmatic they're in the the, the 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 living you know they might not believe in your fantastical stories they might not believe in magic they might not believe that uh, what you're telling them is the truth there's a sense of elusiveness okay and I feel like what you're telling them is your version of the truth but for whatever reason they might have difficulties believing your version of the truth at the same time, I feel like there's a sense of mysticism and magic about the way in which you look at your life, the, the, the experiences that has really shaped you. Despite all the ups and downs, you still believe in fairy tales, you still believe in magic, and you still believe that there are uh, a lot of like unknown and unresolved mysteries in the world, so we should not close off our sense of magic in order to get through life in a more practical or pragmatic way okay so i feel like you might be straddling the fence here i'm sensing with when it comes to like realism versus mystery so it, it's almost like you might not be made for the typical nine to five work environment you might want something more you might be yearning for that great adventure that big escape or you know the the tropical paradise where the sun is like a ball of fire in the sky okay you might be yearning for that sense of uh, adventure that's that travel lust that travel bug you might be wanting to recapture and to relive an experience and you're trying to find either a partner in crime or somebody that believes in what you saw believes in your story so that they can embark on this voyage with you and so, you know, the children sitting at the far end of the table, they keep telling this man, tell us more, tell us more. I feel like if in the past you've been dealing with people or situations, people who are a little bit more like, you know, pragmatic and they don't really entertain tall tales, right? Or they're just like stick, stick in the mud and they want to pop your bubble. Okay, I feel like you're finding the right audience. You're finding starry-eyed adventurers who are really inspired by the stories that you tell them. You're able to find your community and your clan coming through in the month of April. And so it looks really, really good where you have this sense of homecoming. Finally, I found my community. Finally, I'm finding people that are like me, that want to explore and they see and still believe in the magic in the world and things like that and then a part of you i, I do see this major wonder lust energy wanting a, a more exciting or a more exotic life feeling a little bit stale and a little bit like weighed down by responsibilities and wanting to kind of like lighten your load to to move forward to to uh, travel to kind of like connect with foreign people foreign lands okay so i feel like you're 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 nesting instincts you're not domesticated okay your your energy is definitely not domesticated you don't want to be domestic domesticated you don't want a life that is predictable you don't care about that financial security anymore which is good because it seems to me like you've made it you know when you're um you're not concerned about survival when you're not concerned too much about how to pay the bills and if it seems to me like you've already had sorry I have to retrieve this from the floor when you've already had um, enough financial blessings and financial abundance where you don't have to worry you're in a good space now to you know enjoy your leisure time and to really think about what really drives you what is what makes you feel passion um, and, and passionate again and where it is and what it is that you want to be where you want to live and you're planning the next stage of your adventure we have some really beautiful things. 
Okay. So <clears throat> you have some really beautiful cards, okay? But um, I think I'm gonna pull out, let me see, three more. So death, you have death, which is new, like the ending, ending of the old and a new beginning coming through. So death and then immediately after that judgment. So that's like new things coming through as a, re as, as a result of letting go of something. What is this something that we are talking about here? What is this something that you're showing me? Can you give me three cards please for the Pisces people? Okay, so this is the card about success, okay? It's next to the Queen of Pentacles, so this is worldly success, having a lot of financial abundance, like I mentioned. Um, some of you might be getting a promotion. Some of you are getting a major step up in your career. Some of you might get a like a big pay increase, but either way, your financial situation is, is golden. It looks really, really positive and you're also re-examining the work that you're doing and i feel like yes on the one hand it is very stable it um, brings home and generates a lot of money for you but with this four of cups it's like i want a little bit more i want that fantastical job i want that magic and the the the, the passion and i want to feel alive with the work that i do so some of you are at a point where you're just like yes this job is great but now i'm looking for something new so i feel like this um new energy with the death card and the judgment card is all about seeking something new seeking something that is a lot more in alignment with the things that you believe in which is the um the the exciting journey um starting a new blank page being able to travel being able to move having more flexibility and especially being in a little bit more of a warmer more tropical environment so i feel like for many of you um it has snowed too long where you are is what i'm sensing so i don't know if you're living in an environment where it's a little bit um, sparsely populated and it's really hard to find a community of people or you're in an environment where it's like cold year-round and you're looking for more sunshine so that 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 um, ball of fire that sun in the sky that looks like a ball of fire it indicates to me a more tropical environment and I feel like you're looking for sunlight or you you might for some of you have seasonal depression and so it would behoove you to move to a more warmer climate okay just for your emotional health of course we all don't have the luxury to just be able to pick up and go but i feel like you're starting to realize it some of you might be uh aging and you're just like i i can't stand this cold anymore so i need to you know get myself to a better place or to uh, find something else so i i feel like there's a need here movement in the southern direction so this is travel this is swift travel and swift movement and swift communication and relocation and especially moving into the um, southeast direction i feel like that's what's in store for you guys so you might be contemplating about new jobs that are coming through in the picture there might be a new job on the offing for you that might require a total relocation and it looks really really beautiful because what's coming through is king of pentacles which is new promotion new work the hierophant working in a very strong excuse me working in a very stable a very um institutionalized type of an environment this is a job that i, I usually call it like um not so much working for a uh, non-profit or a private enterprise but more for the public sector okay dealing with institutions dealing with like top-down type of management which is not all bad it sounds boring but it's not all that bad um and it's so stable and it's been around for a really long time so you have a little bit of job security but then on top of that it pays really well okay so you can escalate and you can uh you know get constant promotion you can climb that corporate ladder and the work environment itself i feel like it's really right up your alley so some of you might be solicited for a job some of you might be solicited to run a company or an organization some of you might be thrust into really strong intense leadership positions 
and you have all of these ideas that you have collected from all the other places that you have worked to really make some major powerful changes in this kind of stale and stagnant environment and at first people might not be receptive but i feel like over time they're going to start to see the merits in it they're going to believe in the things that you're trying to uh, bring forth into the world and they're going to i i feel like internalize your vision and so you might have been like the visionary ahead of your time and you might have wanted to implement a lot of changes there were blockages there were people that are like naysayers or there were people that were just like that's too much too soon because i feel like you know you have a lot of ideas that you're throwing out there and this person is like no 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 slow it down and so the environment that you're in especially if it's a new work environment people are a little bit more inspired a little bit more willing to experiment and a lot more receptive to the sense of magic that you're trying to work, bring into the new environment so i feel like if you are contemplating should i stay here i've got house a house here i've got friends here i've got a lot of assets i've got like you know a good social network and should I leave all of this and transition with the death card and the judgment card into a new work environment? Is that going to bode well for me? Is that a practical choice? And I feel like you definitely should implement this move because it's going to bring in like a breath of fresh air that is very much welcome in your life, okay? So that's the first thing that I'm seeing. Let me talk about all the, the other marginal things. What we have here is the world. I can't pick up the card. And uh, this is the closing of a cycle, okay? And realizing that a cycle is closing, realizing that the whole world is out there waiting for us. There's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of like different areas that we want to explore. There's a sense of, uh, I feel like there's a sense of like longing for the exotic, wanting something that is different for many of you. And so I feel like this is a card about yearning. She's almost like looking through that uh, door that is left ajar and wondering what her life would have, would be like if she were on the other side, okay? So it's almost like acknowledging that, yes, what I have here is okay. It's very, very stable. Ten of Pentacles, things that are built up over time, okay? So I feel like for many of you, this is a work situation where things are really, really stable. I can keep going. I can keep advancing. I'm going to get a pay increase every year. I can get promoted. I already know what I'm doing. I'm in a really powerful position where I can be groomed for a leadership position. But it's a little bit stale and stagnant. And I feel like in the past, you might have convinced yourself, this is where I could, you know, start a, a life. But then over time, you know, possibly within the past three years, two years even, it has proven to be a little bit like too rigid, too structured, too predictable, and it's no longer your cup of tea. And so you're thinking about other options, okay? For others of you, you have a really strong soulmate connection here. And we have here the Two of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles. I feel for some of you, you're shifting into a relationship where, you know, a lot of the time, I, I don't know what it's like to be married uh, and, you know, to, to be married to somebody for like five years or 10 years, but I feel like there is a relationship, regardless of how long the two of you have been together, there is definitely somebody that you're living with. There's shared assets shared uh, bank account, housing situation, grocery bills, possibly children, possibly, you know, like both names are on the car, both people's names are on the house. So there's, there's like a lot of financial entanglements between you and another person. And I feel like you're sensing that the love is no longer there. The love has transformed and it ha has become very quiet. It's no longer passionate. It's a, a very safe, stable, quiet type of a love that might have started out very passionately, but now it's more friendship based. And strangely, I feel like Cancer, uh, I'm sorry, Pisces, you want a certain amount of drama in your relationship. And you know, this is a true, I feel, of all dual signs, okay? You and the Geminis and um in a way like the sagittarius okay you want 
like the, the dual signs, you deal with duality. If it's too safe, too stable, it, it's too predictable, it could be a little bit boring for you. If it's too uh, hot and heavy, too unpredictable, then it can be too much for you. But you want a certain amount of push and pull. You want a certain amount of uh, love, but then detachment. So you want a little bit of tension in your relationship in order for you to feel alive. And I feel like there's something here that is a little bit safe, predictable, but at the same time, you perceive it to be stagnant. You're trying to, you know, re-inject some type of passion in this relationship. And then for others of you, you're at the peak of your income generating capabilities. You have a really, really good partner. And I feel like one person might be the breadwinner in this relationship, and there's nothing wrong with that. And because of that, there's a lot of flexibility when it comes to why don't we pick up and relocate somewhere else? Why don't we, you know, make some drastic move? Why don't we move away? And you can work from home and then I can find another job and you know everything will be amazing. So you're you're trying to find that passion or re-inject that passion into a relationship, and you might feel like Maybe we should move. Maybe the change in scenery, the change in location, the geographical locational changes would be that, would kind of like be that spark in this relationship, that much needed spark for this relationship. So I feel like you're, you're looking at a situation and you're trying to find external sources of inspiration to bring into the fold when in fact the, the relationship looks perfectly fine, but you're looking for something a little bit more, okay? For some of you, you could be dealing with an earth sign, and I'm seeing Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Some of you could be dealing with um, an, a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. And what I'm feeling in general is that the, the two signs that you're dealing with these are more homebody. These are more domesticated people that you're dealing with, okay? Especially the Scorpio and, and also that Taurus. They're a little bit more, well, Virgos too, uh, Cancers especially. So either way, my point is um, the people that you're dealing with, they're a little bit more on the domesticated front, okay? They're, they're, they're nervous about change, and I feel like you're pushing change too much, too fast, and it's making them really, really apprehensive. And... Um, I feel like they, they might feel like you're a little bit frivolous, you're a little bit whimsical. You might be initiating something or starting something and they're not really sure that three months from then, after implementing this change or this decision, they're not really sure if you're still going to get bored and do something else that is just as drastic. So I feel like they're telling you to slow things down, they're telling you to mull it over, but deep down they are very internally uh, scared of change, scared of upheaval, because they're a little bit more domesticated and they're a little bit more like, they're, they're looking for a little bit more uh, certainty, they want to put down roots. So, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Like, th that's the mentality of the person that you're dealing with. They're very practical. And so it's really hard to convince this person. And I feel like you don't have to convince them with the practical argument. You just need to convince them with the emotional argument, which is being able to identify accurately what it is that you want, what it is that really stirs your passion. I want to be in the tropics. I want to interact with different people from a different culture. I want to be able to, you know, uh, walk around at night without feeling cold. I want to be able to, you know, it's, 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 it's like just telling them what it is that really stirs you. And I feel like when you approach these people from that angle, it's going to really hype them up. It's going to make them want to bring these things for you or create these things for you or to go out into the world and find these things to give to you. So I'm sensing that many of you are looking for a change. You've realized that where you are professionally, it's stable. It, it, it can keep growing, but you're not really happy there because emotionally you yearn for more and you yearn for more excitement and more adventure. And if it's the, the spirit of adventure that you're looking for, I feel like somebody is putting like a, a damper on your plans, but I feel like you can convince them, okay? They're just afraid of change and they're just afraid that 
this is something that is um, fickle. They're, they might think that you're fickle, like you might want this now, but three months from now you might not want it and you might regret the decision. So I feel like they're not really understanding what it is that you innately need and want. And so you kind of need to uh, walk them through the process. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm sensing like an age gap, a cultural divide between two people as well. The world card usually indicates like dealing with foreigners. So you might be dealing with someone who might have different values, who might be culturally very different from you. And so you're seeing the same situation, but through different lens. And so approaching them from a different perspective, I feel is a lot more, it's going to yield a better result. Okay. Some of you could be dealing with a lot of different people in your work environment from different backgrounds as well. So work ethics, um, might be different okay the things that we value as you know I'm, I'm i'm speaking here from an american like uh standpoint okay the things that we value when it comes to work ethics when it comes to punctuality when it comes to quality and delivery of our work might be very very different across the board um, if you're dealing with people from different culture so there might be you know these little annoyances that you have to kind of work out when you're dealing with cross-cultural communication, cross-cultural expectations as well. The bottom line is everybody's on the same page. They want to achieve the same things and they have the common goals in mind. So I feel like this can be overcome. It just needs to be approached from a different angle and talking to people by activating more of that heart chakra, really trying to inspire people and, um, you know, telling people that appealing to their self-interest, there we go, appealing to their senses, appealing to their emotional needs and their self-interest. I feel like that's really going to allow you to get gain traction in this situation. So if that's the case and you're feeling a little bit frustrated, I feel like there will be communication breakthroughs. Okay. And then on the other hand, you have really good loving relationship partners overall there that are very, very stable. If there has been a recent argument with another person, especially Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and Scorpio, Pisces, Cancer, uh, there's going to be a working things out, okay? So I feel like if you're dealing with another person who is very, very stubborn, I feel like you're dealing with someone who's a little bit cold, pragmatic, practical, a little bit calculating, but very warm and, you know, just like someone who's a, a really good match for you. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of mutual understanding. This person is choosing to be stubborn. And I feel like there is going to be a communication breakthrough. The judgment card is greatly about that. Um, somebody, you know, honking the horn or blowing the horn, which basically means communication is coming into the picture. It's going to work itself out. So I don't want you to worry over it. It just takes a little bit more time and it just takes you being able to express yourself in a way that will allow them to kind of like learn to put themselves in your shoes to understand where you're coming from. Okay. I will leave it at that, uh, Pisces. I do wish you the best. And uh, for those who are looking for a reader, I do have a link in the description box below for a psychic base out of California. Her name is Bridget. She is phenomenal. I've been putting in a plug for her because I really, really value her insights and she's phenomenal. She's, um, she's gifted. So if you'd like to book a reading, I highly recommend her. Um, I'll, I will be back in about two weeks time for your mid-month reading. Take care of yourself and I wish you the best.